This video is going to look at example 10 from chapter 3, and this is looking at percentiles in a little bit more of a realistic scenario. Now, I note there beside example 10, this is not in the book, and so, you know, do not worry that you're going to see tests on this because the only way to prepare for this is to look at example 10. But I do want you to take a look at this because, like I said, this is more similar to what you would actually see in the real world. So first off, I want to set up how this problem is structured. Below is a partial frequency distribution for a hypothetical standardized test. The rows for scores 53 and 70 have been omitted. So if you looked at this entire table, the top maximum score is 1,000. Uh, 1,000. So scores from 0 to 1,000. But I left out 500, 8, 70 so that it fits on one page. What we want to do is we want to be able to find the percentile for a person who has a raw score of 900. And we want to be able to find the percentile for a person who had a raw score of 940. So that's the type of problem. This is more realistic. If you look at this uh, frequency distribution, the cumulative frequency for the highest score is 897. So 897 people took the test. If we divide that into 100 buckets, you're going to have roughly 9 people in each bucket. This is far more realistic application for percentiles. Now, and if we want to do this, we're going to go back to what we had done in example 8. And I want to call your attention to a relationship apologize there for bumping the tripod, uh, a relationship that existed. If you look at this number below column, the first class, the number below is zero, and that is true for every percentile problem. The person who has the worst score didn't beat anybody, and that is always true. But if you look at the rest of this column, the one here and one is there, two is here, two is there, five is here, five is there, six and six. That is not a coincidence. If you think about it, the number of people who scored worse than you is the cumulative frequency of the next score below you. All right, so with that in mind, if we move to the solutions for example 10, we want to find the percentile for a person who had a raw score of 900. In this case, we go to the row for 900. We look at that. We need to know the two things to calculate the percentile. How many people took the test and how many people did they beat? All right, the number of people who took the test is 897. The number of people that somebody who scored 900 beat is 843. Because 843 people scored 890 or worse. So, to find the percentile rank for 900, we take 843 plus 0.5 is 843.5, divided by 897 times 100 is 94.0356, keeps on going. So, you see it's 94.04, that is the 94th percentile. So a person scoring 900 is in the 94th percentile. Now, if we want to look at raw score of 940, the number of people who took the test is still 897. The row for 940, the number of people they beat is 874. So if we come down here, 874 plus 0.5 divided by 897 times 100%. 0.9749 times 100, 97.49, the 97th percentile. Very narrowly missed rounding up to the 98th percentile. So, like I said, this is a far more realistic example of how percentiles would be applied. So don't get excited that you're going to see this on the exam. I don't think it's fair to test you on something that is not in the textbook but I do think it's important that you see how this applies to the real world.